Amen. How many wants to start this new year out giving God praise? Amen. Go ahead and take just a moment just to thank Him. Amen. Let's start this new year out right praising His name because He is worthy. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our honor. Amen. He is a good God. How many wants to worship Him today? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise as you're, as you're seated this morning. Amen. We want to welcome everybody here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a wonderful New Year celebrating. Amen. 2020 is behind us. Amen. Amen. Everybody was hoping, waiting on that. I can't wait for 2020 to be over. How many knows we need to make 2021 the best we can? Amen. Amen. If we keep doing the same things we did in 2020, 2021 ain't going to be any different. But if we'll make a mindset up, to change the way we act, to change the way we live, amen, to give God the praise that he's due, amen, how many knows he'll bless us, amen, how many's thankful for what he's given us in our lives, amen, it's so good to be able to worship him, amen, I want to remind you uh, about our giving online and how we can give in our tithe and our offering since we're still not taking up a physical offering except for when we exit the doors. Amen. You can give on the square in the back. If you have any questions, there will be somebody to help you with that. You can also give through our church center app. Find Anchor of Hope Tabernacle and give through there. You can give by texting 84321 or you can give on anchorofhopetabernacle.com. So still several different ways that we can give and sow into the ministry. Amen. And continue to do the work that God has called us to do. We want to remind everybody, let's be conscious of everything that's going on. Amen. We were talking in the office. There's a there's several churches, actually, that have had a pretty big surge, kind of like we did here a few months back of COVID going through their church. So let's, let's be in mind of each other. Amen. Let's be mindful of one another. If you want to talk and fellowship, that's fine. But let's give each other our, our distance. Amen. Let's be uh, mindful of those things and social distance and just doing our part. Amen. It's not about a political thing. It's not about fear. It's not about any of that. It's just like Pastor put on Facebook last night. It's just a shepherd watching out for his flock. Amen. So let's keep those things in mind. Amen. Respect one another. Keep our social distance. Amen. And all the same time loving on one another and letting them know we care for them. Amen. We do want to continue to lift uh, many of our members up in prayer. Amen. That are not able to be here. Let's continue to uh, lift Brother Scott and Sister Sherry up. Amen. How many is thankful for the praise report? Amen. God did a work. Amen. He, ma- he, he is a miracle worker. Amen. He is a way maker. Amen. It was very serious. And of course, you know, there's still things going on that he has to deal with. But God's already moving. Amen. And we thank him for that. But continue to lift him up in prayer. There's several in the church that are sick. Remember my dad, if you would. He's having a real bad issue with his knee this morning. So there's just so many that are going through things. Some still aren't able to be here. You know, just out of precaution, they want to take care of them and their family. And that's fine. That's their choice. And we respect that. But we're just going to lift them up in prayer. Amen. We're going to go to battle for them. How many knows when our brothers and sisters can't fight for themselves? That's what we do. Amen. We fight for them. Amen. And we trust God will touch them and minister to them. We want to let you know coming up, we want you to mark it in your calendar and make plans this month, January the 23rd and the 24th. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. On Saturday, January, I mean, Saturday, January the 23rd at 7 o'clock and Sunday morning at our normal time at 1030. We're going to be having a two-day revival with Brother Mark Ramsey. If many of you will remember, I believe he came, what, two Novembers ago? Not this past November, November. Okay, so about a year ago, blessed us tremendously, amen. He's a powerful man of God. We just had his father here with us a couple weeks ago and Brother Paul Ramsey. So that's Saturday and Sunday, January 23rd and 24th at 7 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday morning at 1030, amen. And we're believing for God to move and to minister in those meetings, amen. How many is ready to start off this new year the right way, amen, to worship him? We've been lazy long enough, church. Come on, somebody raise your hand and say, Rush, you've been lazy long enough. Say your name. Don't say my name. Amen. Amen. Let's talk to ourselves. Rush, you've been lazy long enough. It's time to get on the ball and on fire for God. Amen. Anchor of hope, we've been lazy long enough. It's time to make it happen. Amen. 
Let's see some souls won for the kingdom of God this year. Amen. That's what it's about. That's all we care about. We don't care about a building. We don't care about finances are good. Finances are important. But we care about winning souls. Amen. And that's our goal this year. If you would stand with me, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're just going to turn this service over to him. Amen. We're going to believe for him to move in our midst. I believe that pastor has a word from the Lord for the people this morning. I believe if we're ready and we're expecting, God will do everything he set out to do. Amen. Let's talk to him. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord. We're thankful. God, Lord, we praise you, Lord, that we've come through another year, God. Lord, as trying as it was, Father, as as strange as it was, God, Lord, you kept us, you protected us, God. Lord, and you brought us through once again, God. Now, Father, we've come into this new year, God, Lord, and we've come in to magnify you. We've come in to praise your name, God. Lord, there's so many that are still affected, God, and still being impacted by this disease, God. Lord, we believe, God, Lord, that as you've already begun to work miracles, God, Lord, you can completely heal, God. You can completely restore, Father. You can do works, God, Lord, that no doctor can do, that only you can do, Father. Lord, and we're trusting you for that this morning, God. Lord, we believe, God, Lord, that this is going to be a year of souls, God. Lord, that we're going to begin to see sons and daughters come in, Father. Names that are written down in our book, God, Lord, they're going to begin to come home in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, every stronghold, every chain, every Every bondage that has them bound, God. Lord, we're going to begin to see them broken by the power of your name, God, because you're still able, God. Lord, you're still greater than the darkness, Father. You're still greater than the evil, God. Lord, and as we'll call on you, if we'll magnify your name, you said if you be lifted up, that you would draw all men unto you, Father. Lord, we lift you up today, God. Lord, we worship you. We don't worship a man. We don't worship a song, God, but we worship and we magnify the name of Jesus today God. Lord have your way in this place God. Lord let your spirit your anointing fall fresh on our hearts and our lives. Lord we love you and we praise you in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Worship with
a service is that I have too much to say, too much to sing. <laughs> I feel like I'm overflowing this morning. I tell you, I miss being in the house of the Lord when we're not here. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I am so glad that he is the keeper, isn't he? You know, when I think back on this year, uh, on New Year's Eve night, you know, I've little girl I grew up being in a New Year's Eve service every night we would pray in the new year you know uh, but I can't help but reflect even as I'm at home even if I can't hardly stay up till midnight anymore <laughs> on the goodness of God and how it doesn't matter what we face in whatever year whatever is thrown at us the goodness of God remains the same and God has been good in my life and that's the song that I was thinking of and the verse says lately I've been looking back along this winding road to the old familiar marker of the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche. There's no better way than to tell you than to say, God's been good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Sure, I've had my share of heartache and the good times and the bad, but God has been good. I'm glad that he's a keeper. And I did get to visit my parents' church Tuesday night and he, uh, they had a visiting minister there and I wanted to read one of the verses that he read. I just thought it was so beautiful over in Deuteronomy. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun who runs rideth upon the heaven in thy help and in his excellency on the sky. I'm so sorry. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall throw thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say destroy them you know we think of God being up in the heavens and being all eternal and he is and when we look up and we see his creation we get all overwhelmed sometimes but even in the bottom even when we're in our lowest point that is where his everlasting arms are and no matter how far we fall or how low we feel his arms just surround us he is our shepherd he goes before us and we are never ever alone zachary you know how so many guns are shooting this time of the year people are so excited to shoot in the new year or whatever and he's like was that a gun? Was that a gun? You know, because sometimes it's so loud and it's like, yes, it's okay. But you know, sometimes we, we are paranoid like that. What was that, Lord? What is this? A pandemic, you know, what is this? A, you know, a sickness in my family. And he's like, just calm down. I've got it all under control. And he has it under control. The Lord is our shepherd this morning. And we can walk in victory because of him.
Come on, give him some praise. His spirit lives within us. Thank you. Come on, clap those hands to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank God that His Spirit lives within us. Amen. How many knows it's our victory? You can be seated this morning. Thank God for His grace and His mercy. Thank God for the opportunity, amen, of being in the house of the Lord again. As Miss Allison said, the dangers of not having a service means you usually got twice as much to say, and <laughs> Brother Eddie came a while ago and he said, uh, can you cut it a little short today? We're running a little low on oxygen, and <laughs> I said, paint it <laughs> and release it every 10 minutes. <laughs> Give her enough to breathe for just a few minutes, <laughs> just so she don't go out. <laughs> oh, I'm getting the evil eye now. <laughs> Hallelujah, I am not alone, but I feel all by myself up here. <laughs> so, amen. Uh, preach, preacher's always thinking, and my thinking gets me in trouble sometimes. <laughs> I speak before I think, <laughs> and so then I think about it. <laughs> and so, But we praise the Lord that everybody's able to be here this morning. As Russ said a while ago, many still sick and fighting different battles. Some fight fear. Amen. There is a spirit of fear that is raging among the people. But the Bible clearly says he's not, he didn't give us. The Lord Jesus didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. So as wacky as I may seem, I've got a sound mind. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if this is crazy, you ought to try it. <laughs> Amen. I promise you, you'll feel a little better. Amen. And it's good to be able to smile in the face of adversity, in the face of things that we're unsure of. It's, be, it's good to be able to smile knowing that God is with you. And that is my hope and my promise in this coming year that God is with me. Amen. And I know you hear all kind of things and I've seen all kind of statements and you know, this is the year of you, this, this is the year of that, and this is the year of you being able to do this, that, and the other. Well, I'm just going to say this. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about the rest of my year. I may not be here next Sunday. Let me tell you this now. Should the Lord come back, Russ is welcome to meet whoever wants to be here. <laughs> Amen. He will be the pastor, and, and maybe Allison will be the associate pastor. I don't know. But, but, but should the Lord come back, I'm out of here. <laughs> okay? And I love you, Russ. I really do. I don't act like it, but I do. Amen. I always tell everybody he's the son I never wanted. <laughs> just, you know. Amen. God just, it falls my lot to deal with him. <laughs> and so it falls his lot to have to deal with me. <laughs> and so uh, it's kind of equally balanced out there just a little bit. Amen. God has done some great things for us. Amen. I was looking back on some things through our records for this past year, trying to uh, preliminary get ready for me and Russ usually spend a, about a day and a half going through everything at the end of the year, trying to get things together on what happened during the course of the last year and what money went where and how what money came in and what it was applied to and how did we stay within budget? Did we blow some things out of budget? Yes, we did. <laughs> Amen. We never knew we'd have to be giving as much as, and that's one of the things that we capitalize on. That's who we are. We give. And there was, of course, with... COVID, a greater need to give. I came in this morning, our, our blessing box was totally empty, and a $5 bill was in it. Somebody had come by and left a little offering there, and we put some of the few things that we had. I'd been planning the last couple of days to try to go buy groceries, and I've just been too busy to do it, but you know, it's on my short list to go get some things to put in uh, our blessing box. When you get a little note from somebody who lives in a tent 
And they say, thank you for doing this because it's made the difference. And a month ago, I guess, if you could, could you put a blanket? Matt went one Sunday after church and picked up a blanket, brought it back. And I suppose they got it because it was gone pretty quick. And, uh, you know, it's a blessing for us to be a blessing. Well, that didn't go real far. It's a blessing for us to be a blessing. Amen. God doesn't bless us to sit on things. He blesses us to give to others. And so that's our heart's desire is to do more for the kingdom of heaven. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me in the book of Joshua this morning. In the book of Joshua. I want to read a couple of verses of Scripture. I'm probably going to read about 14 verses of Scripture, but uh, that's about 14 hours worth of preaching for y'all that don't know me. <laughs> and so, uh, so, but we're going to hurriedly get through this. But I'll read a couple of verses, and then we're going to pray just a minute. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 3. And they commanded the people, saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then shall you remove from your place. Everybody say, remove from your place. I say it like you had breakfast. There you go. And go after it. And there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way heretofore. You have not passed this way heretofore. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the magnitude of your word, and I thank you for every home and every family represented in this building and I thank you for every home and every family represented by means of Facebook, of people who will join our live stream, people who will see this at some point later. Lord, we ask God for the next few moments you would sanctify your servant. I need you, Lord. I cannot do this without you. I have to have your help and your spirit to touch my heart and touch my life. Lord, anoint our ears and our hearts to receive your word. Your word is already anointed. And God, we're believing, God, that an impartation will come this morning and you'll speak to our hearts and you'll speak to our lives fresh in Jesus' holy name. And everybody say amen. Now I want to pick up with verse 4 and read through verse 5 and 6. And it says this, uh, where, did, where did I leave off? Well, I'm going to read four again. <laughs> Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way heretofore. Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. I want to stop there for just a minute because I want you to do with me this morning what I do when I read. I tried to visualize myself being there, seeing what's taken place, understanding where they have come to. And I want you to understand that the children of Israel have wandered through the wilderness after coming out of Egypt for 40 years now. Had they been obedient to God in a manner of 10 to 14 days, somewhere in there, they could have possessed the promised land. But because of fear, that thing we talked about just a little bit ago, but because of fear, when Moses sent 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan, 10 came back with an evil report and said, yeah, the fruit's there like you said. Amen, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, but, 
Don't you know the buts will stop you every time? Amen. But there's giants there. And we were grasshoppers in their sight. In our own sight, we look like grasshoppers. But Joshua and Caleb stilled the people and said, Hey, let's go up at once. If so be that the Lord fight for us, we're able to go in and possess the land. Amen. God will fight our battles. We've got to understand you can stand with the minority or you can go with the majority that want to hunker down in fear or you can stand with a handful of folk that will say, my God reigns. He's alive today. He has the same power today that he's always had. Hebrews 13 and 8 declares that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He ain't lost one ounce of power. If you ever healed anybody, he's obligated to do it again. If you ever did one miracle, he is obligated by his word to do it again. He never said it would stop. People have said it would stop. People said it passed away with the last apostle. Well, I'd like for them to show me where the last apostle passed away because he's still calling. Amen. He still has prophets. He still has apostles. He still has evangelists and pastors and teachers. And I ain't talking about people that just want to claim a title because we have them everywhere. But I'm talking about people truly anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost to fulfill what God called them to do. They still live in our land. He still has a handful of folk. Everybody say amen. I want you to understand that uh, everybody from the age of 20 years old and upward died while they wandered through the wilderness for 40 years except two men. Joshua and Caleb. God kept them alive. Joshua is now the leader. Moses is dead. And it's come time to go over and possess the land that God said they could have. But there's unknown factors waiting for them when they cross. Number one, how in the world are they going to cross the Jordan? There's no ferry to take them across. Amen. Those ships to get on and go, he's got two to six million people. He's got to get to the other side of this thing. How are they going to go? It's the time of the harvest. The banks are overflowing. They're flooding because the latter rains have come down. Amen. To bring on the harvest. And so this time of year, the Jordan is flooding over. How in the world is he going to get this people across to the other side that God said? So God had to give them a visible sign that the invisible God was among them. Amen. The Ark of the Covenant represented a visible sign of an invisible God. To you and I, the Ark of the Covenant is like the Word of God. Amen. We know God because we know His Word and we have His Spirit. Everybody say His Spirit. Amen. I liked the song a while ago. His Spirit lives within me. Amen. Now, you may not have that. I'm sorry for you if you don't, but His Spirit lives within me. Amen. I, I feel Him. I know He's there. I feel His presence when I get up. I feel His presence nudge me in the middle of the night. I, I told my wife the night before last, I said at 3 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up and I was declaring a scripture over and over. You'll hear it in a week or so. Uh, but uh, there was a scripture coming out of my mouth over and over again and so I just got up and went to my chair and I opened up my Bible app and I started studying and I started looking at things talked to my brother a little bit yesterday who was a pastor down in South Carolina and I said man I never even thought about this on this wise before until God woke me out of my sleep speaking to me and it was coming out of my mouth amen God still knows how to talk to his people do you understand that Amen. And a couple of weeks ago, God began to deal with me on this message. And as a preacher, one of the hardest things to do is you will go back and you'll look again. And then if you've got a space of time before you get to preach it, you'll start to second guess yourself. Amen. So I made some marks in my Bible 
and I closed it. And I said, I ain't going back to it till it's church time. Not, not that I didn't go back to the Word, but I didn't go back to that passage until it was church time. Amen, because I wanted it to be fresh in my mind like it was when God spoke to me. Amen, I believe that we're passing away. Now everybody can say through 2020, we've had to go away we've never passed before. But I want to tell you something. I really honestly, truly believe it was just a little dress rehearsal for what we're facing, for what's coming upon our land and our nation, and you better get ready. Amen. When Joshua started to take the, pe the children of Israel across, he was told, tell the people to sanctify themselves because God's going to do something. But I want them to do this. I want them to understand. The priests are going to pick up the ark. Brother Russ, you ready to get that word? Come on, are you ready for this year to preach like you ain't never preached before, son? We got to carry the word. But watch this now. I've always preached this, uh, and, and I'm going to do it again this morning and, and give me this one verse to preach to anybody who feels like you're a minister of the gospel and to every leader, every person in a place of leadership within the church. There's got to be a space between those carrying the word and those who are following the word. You know what that means? You can't be best buddies with everybody. Because the time's going to come when you're going to have to speak some hard things out of the word of God. And if you're everybody's buddy, they ain't going to receive it. Their feelings going to get hurt. They'll pooch their lips out. He done made me mad this morning. I ain't going to do nothing. I don't care what he said. <laughs> Well, go ahead and be that way. Yeah. Amen. Guess who's going to lose? Come on. Come on. Amen. If you get that attitude, you are the loser. But I want you to understand something else. Not only are you losing, you make it harder for anybody else to receive. So what we got to do is shoulder up, man up, woman up, and say, I'm man enough, I'm woman enough to receive correction and pick up my cross and follow Jesus. I want to follow him, don't you? Amen. He's taking us somewhere. The church is getting prepared. But I want to tell you, when we're told in the word of God about the second coming of the Lord, he is coming after a bride who hath made herself ready. you got to get ready. Lauren, may I ask you? If you had waited on Matt to make all the preparations for your wedding, would we still be waiting? Quite possibly. <laughs> you know why? Men just kind of like, well, you know. <laughs> We're just like, get the license, you know, find a preacher, give him 20 bucks, and let's get this thing over with. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Amen. Why, why all the big deal? <laughs> you know, and Sarah, this ain't uh, because you just recently did this. But, uh, you know, nowadays there's the big gender reveal. <laughs> How in the world? <laughs> Hold on, this ain't to anybody in the church. How in the world can we have a gender reveal when we're throwing millions of dollars into studying genders? <laughs> to try to figure out who we are. <laughs> Next time you take a shower... Take a glance. <laughs> That's who God made you to be. Hello. Maybe that's too simple. You don't have to have a PhD to say that. Come on, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Lord. Help me, Jesus, because I want to say some things. <laughs> oh, don't, don't push me. <laughs> just, just one more, okay? One more. No, no. You know, we've got to wake up. It's not what they tell us. It's not what education says. It's not what science says. It's what the Word of God says. I'm going to take the Word of God. I'll take my chances with what's been proven, tested, and tried. 
They tried to shut it down 2,000 years ago when they crucified Jesus. Three days later, he got up and said, missed. <laughs> Amen. Come on. It spread instead of shutting down. It caused the gospel to spread. The Holy Ghost came, fell upon 120 in the upper room. They spilled out into the street, staggering around like drunk men and women. Amen. Everybody wanted to know what was going on. And Peter said, these are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel a long time ago. God already prophesied it was coming. God's already got the answer to what's wrong in our world. If we'll turn to him, we'll find the answer we got to turn to him. The church hasn't turned to Jesus. I don't care what anybody tells me. The church hasn't turned to Jesus. In, in 2020, the church has turned to entertainment. We've turned to pleasure, but we sure ain't turned to God. If we had turned to God, you wouldn't have to beg in the altar service. It would be... I remember up in the mountains, you remember when uh, uh, Brother Ray and Sister Dawn gave their heart to the Lord on a Wednesday night. They told me after church, they said, I couldn't wait for that preacher to shut up. Because God had gotten a hold of them right at the very beginning of the service. Now, they hadn't been in church. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know they could go right on to the altar and we would stop what we were doing, amen, and pray them through. They didn't realize that, amen, but they said they couldn't wait, couldn't wait for me to get finished with the message so they could hit the altar and give their heart to the Lord, amen. Just as soon as I started to go into the altar call, here comes that couple streaming up to the altar, running up there, bowing down, and giving their heart and life to the Lord. Amen. About a week later, they had three little kids, just little bitty children. Looked like stair steps. They were getting in their car to leave, and those kids rolled down the window. I stepped around to the side. They waved at me. Bye, Mr. Jesus. <laughs> Brother Greg Pippen was standing there, and he said, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's fix that now. I said, leave him kids alone. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and in their minds, they related the pastor. Mm. In our minds, we crucify the pastor. When I was a child, I was taught to give honor to a man or a woman of God. If mama heard me start to say something about one of the preachers, she could have been have her hands down in the dishwater. She'd yank those hands up and slap my face. Pow! Don't you ever let me hear you say anything. You couldn't call a preacher by their first name. You had to call them brother, <laughs> pastor. Come on! Are you with me? We have lost our respect in the house of God. Now, it ain't respect for men that's going to bring back revival. But if you lose respect for men, you'll soon lose respect for God. Amen. And you won't honor him like you used to honor him. You won't glorify him like you used to glorify him. And after a while, he's a stranger in his own house. So there's to be a space. Now remember, they're leading two to six million people. So it's almost a half a mile. Space between them, 2,000 cubits. A cubit's about 18 inches. So do the math. <laughs> Come up with it. I'm not going to do your math for you. <laughs> Amen, I'm just going to tell you. Somewhere between three-eighths to a half a mile is the space between those carrying the word and those who are following the word, that you may see which way you need to go. If you get too close, if I get too close to Russ, I won't recognize him as a man of God. I'll just see his flaws. I'll, all I can hear is him wanting to pitch cornhole in the church if I, if I get too close to him. Pastor... That's across town. Pastor, we were going to have a corn cornhole tournament. It's raining. Got all these people out here. Is it all right if we set it up in the sanctuary? I said, you didn't really call me and ask me that, did you? I'm just kidding. 
Well, I knew right then he wasn't just kidding. <laughs> and I thought, I ain't got to answer that, surely. I've had people do stuff in the sanctuary, but they never asked me. That's the difference. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He knew I'd come gunning for him. <laughs> uh, I blow the head off him shoulders. <laughs> and you know, there's got to, if I get too close to him, all I remember is stuff like that. All I remember if I get too close to him is when he had, was coming through the Mount program and uh, Dean Goodson and some of the others that we had ministers affirmation program over at Praise Temple and I gave them all on a watch night service I believe it was I gave them all about five minutes to speak I had about six people going through the mount program and, and I stood at the back wall I said y'all got five minutes now get up there and hit it and Russ got up and started quoting a scripture and he said uh, uh, what's that scripture say pastor and I, I knew it but I wasn't going to bail him out. <laughs> Why? Because he would never, ever do that again. How many years ago was that? Oh, it ain't that long. <laughs> but it's probably about 12. Yeah. I ain't never heard him do that again. If I'd have bailed him out, he'd have done it again the next time that he preached. Now, let me tell you, I've had it happen to me too. I just got to be honest. Brother Paul Ramsey was here a few weeks ago. I was on the platform in a tent meeting. Scripture I know like the back of my hand. He, he was walking through the sawdust preaching and he quoted half that scripture. Turned around and said, Pastor, what's the rest of that scripture say? My brain went dead. <laughs> Blank. I couldn't, re I couldn't remember. For God so loved the world that he gave. But that wasn't the scripture. And I said, I don't know. <laughs> my whole church erupted. And, uh, the, the pastor sitting there like... Mm. <laughs> and so... Uh, you know, it, it happens. Come on. But I wasn't preaching when it happened. I just happened to lose where I'm going when I'm preaching. But it, it didn't happen. Amen. If I'd have bailed him out, he would have done it again. Sometimes we've been bailed out too many times. Amen. Mom and daddy, literally, bail you out, bail you out, bail you out, and bail you out. And you just keep on getting in trouble. You keep going back. And the toughest kind of love there is is tough love when you say, no, I won't do it no more. Figure it out. Figure it out. It's pretty hard, ain't it? We haven't passed this way before. We got to get ready. What are you saying when you say that, Pastor? I'm saying there's some things coming in 2021 that we didn't encounter in 2020, and we better get ready. Amen. The church really better turn to Jesus. If we believe that he's coming again, and he is. If we believe that it's going to be soon, and it will be. And somebody says, well, what if it's 20 years? What if it ain't? Amen. What if it's before I get finished? What if there's a big bang before I get finished? And the, you see people start floating up, and you're just thinking, boy, I thought I had one more week to get right. What what if, what if you put it off and you put it off and you put it off until you ain't got a choice anymore and you're left? I don't want to be left. I want to be with him when he comes. Amen. I want to meet the Lord in the air. I want to be, I want, I believe this book, folk. I believe every jot and every tittle of it. I believe it's written for our good. And I believe we better follow it. Now, they had to follow the word of God. The second thing that happened is they had to sanctify themselves. Turn to your neighbor. Look at him. Say, you better get sanctified. Now, neighbor, look right back at him. Say, hmm, you better get sanctified. Now do this. Say it like this. Sanctify yourself. Did you hear this? Sanctify yourself as the Bible. Sanctify yourself. In other words, it's something God ain't going to do for you. You got to make a choice. God ain't going to come down, grab you by the nap of the neck and say, quit that sinning. 
He's already told you in his word what to do. It's up to you to follow it. Ain't no new revelation going to tell you anything, any easier way to do it. Amen. Paul said it like this in Romans chapter 8, Therefore mortify the deeds of the body that you may live. You know what mortify means? It means to put to death through means of pain and self-denial. There ain't no easy way around it, folk. If you want to sanctify yourself and you want to crucify your flesh, it's going to hurt. If you're used to being pampered, better suck it up, buttercup. (laughs) Amen. Amen. If you're used to being pampered, you're not going to be pampered to get ready for what's coming on our nation and the world. And people want to talk about this now. I'm, I'm going to use a phrase you ain't never heard before. Or perhaps you have, but I hadn't until a few weeks ago when me and my brother were talking. We have American theology. Okay? I'm going to explain that. We have, we're, going, we're not going to be here for tribulation. That's American theology, okay? Ask the people in Sudan what they're living through who have an arm cut off because they say they're a Christian. Ask them who've had their lips cut off because they say they're a Christian. Are they living through tribulation? We're Americanized. You know what that means? We're lazy. Spoiled bunch of brats is what we are. We've had it made. We've not really, if we've got to put a mask on, we're going through tribulation. Oh, they've just taken away my every right. Well, let them take away your right arm and then tell me. Amen. Amen. And I'm not trying to politicize something. I'm not trying to make you feel bad for your stance on something. I'm trying to open your eyes up that we have not gone through anything. Shut us down for three months is the worst thing on the face of the world. We could still have church every Sunday. Live stream. It ain't the same. Well, of course it ain't. Come preach to empty chairs. Tell me it's the same. Amen. I got anointed though. Why? Because God's the same. Tell Daniel. Ask Daniel. Was it the same in the lion's den? As living in a king's palace. Ask the three Hebrew children what to feel like in a furnace compared to where they had been before. Amen. But in the middle of each one of those, God showed up. I want to tell you, the same God that walked with him is walking with you and walking with me. He'll show up. Read Fox's book of martyrs. You ever taken the time to Google that? And look it up. Read about a husband standing there watching his wife be tied to a stake to be burnt. Read it. It happened in Christendom. Because they dared name the name of Christ. Little children who were going to be thrust through with a spear except the leader of the house would say, I denounce Jesus Christ. The only way they could spare their children. Yet they stood there. Some they set on fire, and the fire wouldn't burn them. Some were thrown into lions, and the lions would pounce on them, but it wouldn't kill them. They had to try multiple ways of killing these people. But they sang psalms and they glorified God and they gave Him praise and they told their family, I will meet you there. God help us. What are you going to do when they burst through your door before you have time to get to your weapon? And you're surrounded, it's just not one of them. You might could take out one or two, but what if you're bombarded? They've got on full body armor. You got your PJs on or your tidy whities. Amen. Come on. What are you going to do then? It's coming to America. 
special delivery. And the church is going to sleep the whole time. We're going to rock ourselves to sleep. Oh, sing me a song. It makes me feel good. Preach me something, preacher. It just makes me feel so good. I am not interested in making you feel good. I am interested in reaching your soul for eternity. I am interested in you and your family making it all the way to the end. I have run too far to give this race up now. I am too close home. I don't have many. If, if the Lord tarries, I ain't got a whole lot of years ahead of me. There's more years behind me than I have in front of me. But I'm going to promise you one thing. The years ahead of me are going to be my best for the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to do more, preach more, strive more, and reach more. Than I've ever done before. I was holding Oliver last night while he was going to sleep. Started rubbing his hair. I looked over at Lynn. I said, This little fellow don't know how many prayers I prayed for him when he was a little bitty baby and jerking because of drugs in his system. He has no idea. He doesn't know. He don't know how many nights we walked the floor and handed him back and forth and sang and prayed. And I would tell Lynn after hours of doing that, I'll be right back and I'd go into a room and I'd hit my face and say, God, I may not be worthy to ask you, but I need a favor. Would you help that little boy settle down? And would you help him to be able to rest, God, so that we can try to do our jobs tomorrow to a three or four o'clock in the morning and within five minutes he'd be sound asleep. Oh, what a God. I wouldn't trade this Jesus for anything the world has to offer. I don't need money that bad. I don't need my house that bad. I don't need my truck that bad. I don't need popularity at all. Amen. But I certainly need Jesus. Wouldn't trade him. Wouldn't trade him. Run to Bodie when he's having nightmares. Hold him. He'd start kicking. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. My heart would break. He'd scream in terror. I'd say, it's all right, buddy. It's all right. It's all right. I'd rub it the head and kiss him on the head. Pray for him. It happened night after night after night. You was there so many nights. It's night after night after night after night. Then after a little while, he settled down. Peace came. But if I were holding both of them and somebody burst through and said, unless you denounce Jesus Christ, we'll take these boys. By God's grace, I'd look at them and say, boys, stand for Jesus. Papa, see you on that day. Papa, see you on that day. That will be a reality, people. While we're playing church, that will be a reality. Wake up! It's time to wake up. It's time to quit playing. You've not passed this way before. There's a cry in my spirit. Get people ready. Get people ready. Yes, I do believe we'll have to go through some things. Yes, I do. I think God would have to resurrect Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to them if the United States didn't have to go through some things. So don't think you got a quick escape route. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be shaking. But in the middle of that, there stands Jesus. Jesus. In the midst of your trial is when you find him so precious to you. You hear me and hear me good. It ain't when you got plenty of money. You don't recognize God then. You might say it with your lips, but you really don't honor him. But it's when your money ain't worth nothing and your family's still getting fed. Ryan said something to us the other day, was heading up the hill, and I never had studied this before. There's a book he had that was listening to. And he was talking about when the ravens brought uh, Elijah, fresh meat every morning and every evening. And the ravens was, uh, what's that word, carnivorous. That means they were meat-eating. 
that, that put more of a miracle to the equation because they themselves would feed off of what they were bringing to the prophet of God. But God commanded the raven. He could have commanded some other bird, but he didn't. He wanted this to... to he wanted that man of God to know this is my doings. This ain't yours. Amen. The things that you and I are, are going to face ain't because God wants us to go through it. It's because we've been too stubborn to yield to him. But he's going to want you to know. He's going to want me to know. Right in the middle of that, God is our provision. He's my provider. We sang it a while ago. Do we mean it? He walks before me. Defender, is that the word? And friend? Defender, behind me, I won't fear. Woo. Tell somebody I won't fear. Come on, I, I'm not trying to scare you. I don't want to scare you. I want you to have a confidence when you leave here that if you'll surrender your heart and life totally to the Lord Jesus, he'll make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Amen. In the middle of darkness, he'll turn the light on. He'll shine all around you. He'll let his glory overtake you and he'll show you. Now listen, I'm going to read to you something here. To sanctify means to separate from anything unholy. Anything unholy or impure, and to be set apart for God's purposes. The act of sanctification hmm, points to the principle that God will not powerfully, on behalf, will not move, will not act powerfully on behalf of His people if they are not inwardly clean, spiritually prepared, and working in cooperation with His purpose. We've got our part to do. On, Clean your act up. Amen. Yes. amen. Get us. Throw away everything that would make you look like the world. We cannot expect God to perform signs and wonders unless our hearts are pure and our desires are guided by His Holy Spirit. You hear people say, Boy, we don't see miracles like we used to. You know why? Because we don't do what we used to do. We don't act the way we used to act. And let me just go ahead and say this. Some folk got to an extreme. They judged people by, by the women by how long their hair was and how long their dress was. And men by how long their sleeves were and how short their hair were. Amen. But it didn't matter if you had long hair and a long skirt and a long tongue. You know, we strained at a gnat and swallowed a camel. Come on, you hear me? Amen. But just because some people whacked it up doesn't mean there's some reality to what God wants his church to be. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, then I will receive you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I'll be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. That's his word. Come out. Don't join in, but come out. Don't look like, but come out. Amen. Don't be like the world. The world ain't going to save you. The government wants us to depend on them. How many was happy when you saw that deposit in your account the other day? <laughs> well, some ain't showed up. Well, for y'all's living, right? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Yeah, it's that woman you gave me, God. <laughs> Just, I was calling my kids. I said, if you check your bank account, all of my kids except Josh. Well, now I know. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Straighten up, son. <laughs> Little stimulus check in there. You didn't get it. Well, that, I understand. <laughs> oh, 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 Brother Darrell got his. <laughs> Uh, Brother Ken got his? Yeah, oh yeah, he got his. <laughs> but Brother Eddie, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, the way he picks on the praise team every, every service. Yeah, we understand, Brother. <laughs> Russ said he totally knew. <laughs> 
Oh, Russ didn't get his either. <laughs> Cornhole. <laughs> when the people did what God said do, and the priest took the word, and they walked over to the brim of the River Jordan. I was reading to Lynn this morning the Hebrew and Greek definitions of stand and it said stand your ground don't give up keep your footing stand firm so when we know by scripture when they're the heels of their feet the soles of their feet touch the water God said Pff. but when they stepped down where it was mucky and muddy and miry all of a sudden it was dry ground and he said, you stand firm, holding my word until every person is passed over. Listen, to whom much is given, much is required. So the priest had to stand there while everybody made their journey. Listen, it don't take just a few minutes for two to six million people to do anything. It takes a little while. And the priest stood there. When they got tired, they stood there. Amen. When they got weary, they stood there. Amen. When they didn't feel like being a priest anymore, when you didn't feel like being a preacher anymore, when you didn't feel like being a pastor anymore, you kept on doing it because there's a purpose. There's somebody yet we've got to reach so they can make that transition. I was going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to leave that with you. I don't want anybody to say I was long-winded. <laughs> Are you still breathing back there? <laughs> Barely. Okay. How many minutes I got left? <laughs> Counting down here. <laughs> Just, uh. Oliver, give me a countdown from 10. Knock out. <laughs> They've been watching battle bots. <laughs> and he'll jump up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's a knockout. <laughs> Guess what? There's a countdown going. Can you see the clock from where you stand? Can you tell the hour by the pointing of the hand? But you know what? I preached a message years ago. Carp fishing for Jesus. And me and Scott used to carp fish together when we were teenagers. And you could be right there at the end of the hour. And the buzzer could be sounded. But if you had one hung. All you had to do was holler out, one hung, and it counted. If it was a big fish, it counted, and you won. So I got to thinking about that one day, and I said, God, one of these days, when I hear that final sound, may I be able with my head and my voice to holler, one hung, I want somebody to have taken the bait. And I want to be reeling them in for the kingdom of heaven. One hung. One hung. Miss Allison, would you come, please? Would you play Pass Me Not? I saw that step. <laughs> she sidestepped the Christmas tree this morning. <laughs> I want you to think with me the words to this song. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're facing. I know what my heart tells me. I know what I feel in my spirit. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior.
would you please remember me as you pray? Would you slip that hand up so I can see it? I won't embarrass you, I promise you. Anybody that wants to be remembered, thank you. Hear my humble cry. I want to give you opportunity because some things are just worth standing for. If you want to make things right, I'll meet you here at the altar. But a greater one than me can meet you here. His name is Jesus. Don't leave this place without knowing Him. While she sings the chorus one more time. back here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. I want you to be praying and be in anticipation of the Spirit of God touching our hearts and our lives. Amen. Draw close to Him. He'll draw close to you. It's His Word and He can't lie. So let your heart get close to Him. Amen. Tell somebody you love them and you appreciate them and you're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Remember, pray one for another. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. <laughs>